my build of the Tamiya 148 scale Phantom F4B. Not too far, but it's coming along very nicely. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and welcome back to another session of my build of the Tamiya 148 scale Phantom, the F4B. So this is it here. So as you can see, pretty much, well, I guess we've done a lot of it. It's very recognizable as a, uh, a Phantom now. So last time around, I actually did most of the work on the bottom here. It was mainly the missiles. So we did the sidewinders. Sidewinders were glued onto the pylon. And then we also had the sparrows glued on and I also fixed um, some of the fins on the sparrows because I used the wrong ones. So we did all that in the last session. Now with this one, I'm going to be moving on to step 47, which is going to be some of the drop tanks, I think. So that was 45, 46, 47 is, yes, it's a drop tank. And it looks like a central drop tank. Now before I uh, get into it, I'll take this time uh, to do a little bit of the black wash. So I haven't done a lot. I've only done part of the cockpit. I think I'll apply some into some of these uh, undercarriage wells, give it a bit of time to dry, and then I can clean them up after I finish off the um, uh, other steps. So how about I start that first? So I have some of my Tamiya uh, oil base wash here. And actually, before I go on, I've forgotten my mag visors. So let me just get those ready. All right, so let me just pick out a lens. I'll pick the second least powerful. So it gives me a bit of extra depth as I'm viewing. Give me a quick clean. All right, slap these on. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to concentrate around in these wells, probably inside here as well and also the uh, the speed flaps. So let's get some of this oil base. This is a black wash and I just apply it quite liberally inside. Because it's oil, it takes some time to um, to dry. So by applying it now and then working on something else, I can come back to it. And I won't have to sit around too much waiting for things to dry before I clean them. Okay, so you can see how I'm applying it pretty liberally along this undercarriage door. It's going to highlight all those rivets. So I might shake this up a bit. It's looking a little bit thin. Now with this, the pigment does settle to the bottom of the bottle and just by the amount you shake up indicates uh, or changes how, how heavy the, the wash appears because more pigment will end up in the wash. Okay, so it's already looking a bit heavier. All right. I just apply it everywhere around here. It's good to get into all the nooks and crannies. It will naturally flow by itself as well because the surface tension is very low on a, an oil-based wash. Water-based washes work just as well. They, they generally have a, uh, a water tension uh, additive to make them flow better. So just whatever you prefer. I tend to like the oil stuff because you can come back to it later and clean it up. Now, there's going to be some areas where it's going to be difficult for this shorter brush to access. So I do have a longer paintbrush as well, which I'm going to use to get into those difficult to get at places. Okay, 
I put some of the back surface here as well. Now since I'm doing the front end here, I might as well do some of these deeper crevices like uh, around the, the, the sparrows. Might even see here how some of these panel lines are already been filled in with the uh, the wash. Makes them very pronounced. And you actually get to see a lot more of this surface detail than you would normally because you wouldn't be able to pick up all these details with the general lighting that gets applied. Just getting into these little vents here. Just across the door here as well. Also do the front. Okay, so you notice how I'm just applying it liberally. It doesn't really matter if you get a lot on because we will be wiping most of this off with uh, enamel th uh, thinners once it's dry. So let's just apply all this in here. As you can see, it's a reasonably simple job to do this. Just takes a little bit of time. You don't have to be super accurate with it. Now it is easier because I'm doing this on an unpainted model. Now if this was painted, what you find that if this was a matte surface, it will start staining the surface. So you need to be a little bit more accurate with your application. If you had this all gloss, then you can treat it the same way because the wash will only uh, go into the really, the, the really sharp crevices and it won't stain the top because the matte surface is basically a rough surface and the pigment will sit across it. Okay, I'll do here then after these speed brakes I'll work on the, the main gear doors And then we'll get into the the drop tank that goes down the center. So there's three drop tanks in all. There's the ones on the sides, which would be uh, uh, I think off the main pylons. We'll check that a bit later. Could be on this. There's two more pylons that go on the outside as well. Alright, so that's one undercarriage door. This is the secondary.
You may notice that uh, when I apply this wash just on these flat surfaces, what appears to be flat is actually bringing up a lot of details. There's a lot of um, rivet heads coming up. Okay, now let's just pop some in here. Actually, I can't reach those, so I'll get my, my brush out. So I'm just using a regular paintbrush. Just gives it a bit more reach. Apply it in exactly the same way. I'm just getting these hard to reach areas. All right, I think that's pretty good. I've covered all those. Uh, it's a little bit here. Right, I'll finish off with uh, this last sparrow. All right. Well, there's some wash applied. Eventually, I'll wash the entire surface. I'll do uh, most of the, um, the sharper, or I guess the, the outside parts, which are easily handled. I'll do them last, so I'll save from rubbing them off. But all these uh, recessed parts, it's good to do them now. So they're still pretty wet. Leave them as is. And we'll start preparing these uh, drop tanks. Okay, so this drop tank here, this is a central drop tank. Uh, what do we need? A23 and uh, A22, I think that may be these. 22, 23, okay. Let's cut these out. Pretty big drop tanks here. Now I'll try and pay attention so I don't get anything wrong. Just make sure we have absolutely all of our parts ready. So the two major parts and then there's smaller parts. A28 and A29. 28. Okay, so there's four components there. All right, let me just clean these up. I'll use my side cuts for doing that.
All right, so we've got our two halves there. It's nice to see on the inside of these drop tanks, actually, it's got some reinforcing ribs. This will be part of the engineering because when parts are pulled out of a mold, they will tend to shrink as they're, they're cooling. So these are, are placed across some panel lines across here, and I guess that just stops it from having a sort of wavy effect as it, as it sets and makes sure that when it joins together, it's perfectly flat. So that's nice to see. Alright, so I've got these little things here. I might just use a bit of sandpaper or these sanding blocks on these. Okay. Alright, so let's glue these together. And sometimes with wide parts, here, it's good to tape them. Uh, we'll just do a dry fit and see how that works out. It's probably going to be helpful across here, I think. So I'll just give a little bit of tape. across the base as well. Okay, so by taping this is going to give me some extra fingers I guess for making sure I align the glue joints. pretty good. All right, so that's one side done. Let's make sure there's no steps from where the two parts are joined together. Okay, now I'm gonna do the other side. Put one drop of glue in the center here. And now let's start doing the rest. So just constantly checking that parts are lined up. It's nothing worse than having a bit of a step between the joins, which means we'll need to sand it down. You may lose some additional detail. So for the moment, I'll leave this tape in place. We'll prepare these two parts here. All right, so we've designed these, so they've got different um, size mounting lugs so you can't get those mixed up. So I've got those two points there. OK, 
Okay, let me just check from the back to make sure these parts are totally matched up with the face of the back of that tank. And here we go. That's much of it done now. So you can see the two little finlets on the back there. Now I think this will be sufficiently set so that I can take all this tape and apply the rest of the glue now. So the tape's done its job to hold it together. And I'm applying glue over these points which are still bare. Okay, so there's one of the tanks done. Alright, so in the meantime, while we're waiting for this to dry, after it's dried, I'll give it a little bit of sand as well because these join parts should be fairly smooth. Uh, let's start putting on these little extra bits and pieces. So I've got D19. So it's a little antenna of some kind. Actually, there's a Q5, which I've got Q right here. Q5, here we go. Alright, so there's that little antenna. And then D. Okay, so D19. D19. Alright, so even these little tiny bits, I'm going to give them a little bit of a clean up just to make sure they fit in the right spot. Because this point here is going to fit into a recess design just for this shape. So if there's any nubs left behind, they're simply going to get in the way. Okay, so it's clean. This one here is probably going to get slotted in a point, so that doesn't really matter. Do you have to take care of the direction though? It's difficult to see, but it does go one way. Alright, so this goes into the nose here. Let me just carefully press that in. It's very small. If I can't get it in here, then I may need to use some tweezers. Yep, tweezers it is. Okay. Alright, so just make sure we've got it right. The tweezers. Let's be careful with tweezers sometimes with really small parts because if the the prongs of the, the tweezers don't match properly, it can flick the part and they can go for miles. I'm sure everyone's experienced that. They go for miles and you can't find them and then a couple of days later you find them and they're right next to your chair. So there's one in, there's one in the nose. And then there's one at the back here. I've actually put some wash in there which I probably shouldn't have done. So it's probably not going to glue all that well. Let's put some glue and try to dilute that off a bit. And we'll put this in place. So I think that looks pretty good. Now as some of this glue sets a bit, I'll just make sure that this is straight. Because I applied a lot there. All 
Right, so I'm just looking from behind, just making sure it lines up. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we've got this bit at the front, we've got this little antenna in the center there. I'll keep this on its, its roof. Let's have a look here. Maybe I can give this a light sand. I'll just use a really fine, what have I got here? I'll use some 800. Gentle sand. Just to take the edge off the join. Alright, looks nice. Let's do a little bit here. Won't do much across the front here because you won't see a lot of it. It's going to be mounted underneath. Then a little bit at the base, at the back. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. I might do. I just put some a thin layer of liquid cement across that. And what, what it's going to do is make it really smooth. Because if I leave that matte surface on it, when I apply the wash, I may just stain all that area. Okay. All right, that's good. Now let's just check it with its fit. There's a good chance I have to open up these holes because <clears throat> at the very beginning I didn't really open them up very much. Let's check it again. And that is perfect. Okay, let's just press fit in. Nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. Right, and since it's like that, I might just leave these off. I'll glue these on at the very end. That allows me to get all my wash into the base there as well. Okay, looks good. For the time being, let's just leave it there because it looks good. And let's see, what's the next part? All right, so we've done step 48. That's attaching the drop tank. Now we're on to 49, which is the outer wing pylons. Okay, so I need the A sections again with the pylons. All right, so what do we got here? We've got uh, 13 and 12. 13 and 12. 11 and 14. Should I move this out of the way and give myself some more room? Let's pop that over there. All right, what else do we need? Okay, there's going to be these other little parts here from the D sprue. Okay, so D, that's not it, that's Q. Nope, all right, so we have a D sprue here. What do we need? D17, we need four of them. D17. D17, here we go. Okay. All right, and the other two from here. OK. 
Okay. Let's have a look here. Right, this is the, the kind of thing that I'm going to glue together. Oops, that's wrong. Glue this together before I clean them up. Actually, this one will need to be trimmed beforehand. Okay. Let's take this little nub off here. So it's good to dry fit things, just to double check. Right, that looks fine. Okay, I'll glue this together. All right, so there's one pylon done. Okay, so that's the right one. And then when that's set, I'll trim off all the, uh, the extra nubs. Let's just chop this bit off. So there's this one point which was uh, undergated. So we just need to make sure we cut that off beforehand, otherwise it's not going to meet. You have to be careful with applying glue. I wasn't so careful then, I had a little bit of glue to get onto my fingers. The problem with that is you leave fingerprints into the side of the, the part. So I just quickly painted over it with a bit of uh, cement and that should have removed most of my fingerprints. If not, let me just do a little bit more there. Let's paint over a little bit more. And that should help do the trick. Still going to leave some marks, but it'll be a lot less than if we just left it. Okay, there's the right one. So let's just clean up these little parts. These are the clamps that are going to hold on the the additional drop tanks. There's only one nub to remove off each. Just need to take care because there is some fine detail here. OK, 
Okay. All right, let's grab this first one that we did earlier. We'll just have a quick sand of these edges. Okay, and then we'll remove these knobs which were left. Now leave them on because just by using a knife, you're covering the two nubs at the same time. And when you're trimming them, they should look even from both sides. So it's a whether you use a knife or sanding, it should still look a lot more even with this particular profile here as you're following it. Right, so is that one. sand all right so there's two pylons let's put on these little holders okay so they've got a particular position make sure you put them on the right way around wrong that's it okay so put our glue just put a little bit of glue on those tack them into place because by the time we put our drop tank um, it may move them slightly so we'll glue them again later but a little bit of glue just holds it in place for the moment. Okay. Okay. All right, we've got our two pylons done. So that's 49 finished. All right, so let's move on to step 50. Okay, so step 50 is going to be the building of the two side drop tanks. I had them here. Let's, what do we need? Okay, D18 and D28. Okay, we're making two of those. Right, so that one. Okay, so just checking these. I've got one undergated part here. Just make sure we trim it. Actually, there's another part I need here too. What's that? D16. All right, let's make get that before I forget. Okay, so let's just do some quick cleaning up. Give us a light sand. During where I'm standing, my go to grit for cutting it back nubs is around 400 I don't know, it's just a happy sort of medium it is coarse you will see scratch marks it does go through plastic fairly quickly it makes a quick job or just cleaning parts particularly those end parts which are not going to be seen anyway it's just mainly for a fit issue all right so let's cut off this undergated undergated 
part there, that nub. Okay, so I just need to clean this one off. Okay, this side, it's got one there. All right, and we'll do exactly the same for the other side. All right, so let's just trim these off first. Okay. Right, let's see if there's a trick to this. Because we're going to have three parts going together. Okay, so we're going to want this to fit into here. Now there's a particular way it fits. It's still got some nubs on this one. I haven't cleaned this one up yet. Okay, now it looks like to get this all lined properly, I'm going to use a little bit of tape. We'll hold this base in one point because it's meant to be flush. Oops, I just lost it inside. Okay, now I'm going to start putting together one corner. Okay, and I'll do the other end. Okay, now we're going to start the other side. Okay, that's one end, and then we'll continue with the other end. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm going to continue with the pylon part. and then through to the centre. Alright, so that's predominantly put together. We still have this lower part here, and I taped it in place just to make sure everything would line up. Now, since we've got the majority of this Put together now we can apply some glue to this lower panel and this will just all tie it in together Okay, so I'm just on the other side now. Seeing this is meant to be flush, we'll just pay attention to that to make sure this curvature is flush. Okay, now I'm going to zip up this top part. Okay, I'll pop that aside, wait until it dries a bit, take off the tape and then apply glue again. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this part. Okay, so we just have to look at the indicators to see which way this fits on. Again, I'll get my tape ready. Okay, so same thing as last time, let's start on these ends. Okay, and then we start with the other side. So as you can see, I'm being pretty careful here to make sure we don't get any steps. Even though there's locating pins, sometimes there's movement between the two parts, you can still get a gap occurring. And it can be the ever slightest gap, but it can be annoying because you'll be able to see it. And also, not the easiest things to sand sometimes, so try to re reduce the amount of step as possible between two parts. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm going to do the pylon now. Okay, now I'm going to do the center here. All right, and there we go. That again is the majority of that drop tank. Now I'm just going to take some time and do this flush part on the bottom. Just apply glue across the top on the top and that'll seal it all up together. Okay. All right, now this one should be set enough for me to remove the tape and then I'll apply the final amount of glue. Okay, that's done. Now let's just do this one too. It's probably got enough time to hold it in place. All right, there we go. We've got our two side mounted drop tanks and two pylons there. And that's uh, step 51, which means we should be able to get those to fit here just make sure we have these the right way around. All right, so. So again, I just need to open up these holes a little bit. So there you go, get a drop, drop tank pylon just sits in there. And now let's just see if this one fits. It fits very nicely too. Okay, I'm gonna glue those in. Just press it down to make sure it's nice and flat. Okay. All right, so those pylons are glued on. All right, so we've done quite a bit today. And let's just see if these fit on here. Yeah, so you've got these they're just gonna fit in here somehow, I think. Oh, 
Oh, so these are optional. Should have paid more attention. So you either have the pylons there or the drop tanks. I think. Really? Let's have a look. I think I missed something here. Let's have a look. Yeah, the wing pylons, yep. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. So let's take these off, because I'm going to. Actually, should I leave those on there? So these are optional. So they either have either or. Now I've already glued on these. these pylons now I've, and I've applied a lot of glue too okay let's just leave them on there okay so that was an option you can either have pylons on or the drop tanks on so and since I've put the pylons let's leave them on there okay well I've built those drop tanks we're not going to use them but we've got the pylons on. Now we'll see what we can do with them at a later stage. Okay, so we're up to uh, step 50. Oh, sorry, we've fin finished 50 and 51. We're actually up to 52, which is going to be the tail. So we're heading towards the uh, home straight now. I did the, uh, the wash on the inside of the wells, which is still yet to be cleaned. We'll do that a little bit later. We mounted the central drop, uh, drop tank and the outer pylons. All right, so next step is 52, and this is where we're up to at the moment. So, looking pretty substantial now, particularly with the drop tank, which is on the bottom there. I think you can see from this angle there. Okay, so thanks for joining me for this particular session. Uh, we've still got quite a number to go. There's still quite a bit of the cockpit to assemble, the tail and such, uh, and some of the finer details, washing of the entire aircraft in black wash and then cleaning it up to get all the panel lines to show up. So not too far, but it's coming along very nicely. So thank you again and I'll see you in the next installment, uh, which will be next week. So thanks again. And if you have any comments uh, or any questions, please leave them down below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thank you.